Extra chairs had to be brought into the Howard Mail Conference Room at the County Annex Building for Tuesday's Alpena County Commission meeting. Gun rights advocates arrived to show their support in turning Alpena into a Second Amendment sanctuary county. Independent journalist Bobby Powell was there to present the resolution. He's the publisher of The Truth is Viral, which has over 11,000 followers on Facebook and over 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. He says the Constitution is clear when stating citizens have the right to bear arms, and the Michigan Constitution even more so. But the Michigan Constitution is, is even more clear. It says that it, every person shall be allowed the right to keep and bear arms for the defense of him, himself and the state. It's one sentence. <laughs> it was very plainly clear. During his time at the podium, Powell expressed to commissioners that their re-election could depend on how they vote on this resolution. Commissioner Brenda Fournier then asked him if she votes no, then would that mean they would not vote for her? This was the response. That's right. The commission was unable to come to a conclusion on the resolution, and it was tabled until next month. Powell said that was fine by him. And they wanted to take a month to think about it, which is, is absolutely fine with me. This is a, a serious issue, and it's something that you know should be given serious consideration. I don't want anybody to make a, a law or, or resolution or, or anything like that based on a snap judgment. The next regular Alpena County Commission meeting is on February 25th. Reporting in Alpena, Kevin Hodge, WBKB News. How you doing? What, what, what show are we on? Truth is viral. The truth is viral, people. So uh, take two penicillins and call me in the morning. You're watching The Truth is Viral, the only news program on the internet trusted to deliver the truth since 2008. And now, here's your host, Mr. Bobby Powell. Um, so next on the agenda we have um, Mr. Robert Powell. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Yeah, I'd like to thank you all, first of all, for uh, allowing me to, to speak, because we're here to talk about preserving our God-given rights to bear arms as enumerated in the constitutions of the United States and the great state of Michigan. I'd also like to thank all of our friends, neighbors, and relatives for turning out today. It's awesome. For every one person that you see here, 10 to 15 are at home or at work that can't be here. Okay, I'm sure that you've been getting emails and phone calls. So, and that's how uh, you'll be continuing to get them as uh, you make your decision. Now, our presence here today should serve as a reminder how many of your constituents support this resolution. We're here because our right to defend ourselves, this state, and this nation is under attack by politicians on the far left. This was demonstrated recently in Virginia, where more than 22,000 heavily armed demonstrators descended on the state <coughs> capitol to express their displeasure with their elected representatives who are considering draconian gun laws. Well, the demonstration ticked them off a little bit, and now the Virginia legislators are considering a bill that will make it a crime to criticize elected officials. And no, I'm not kidding. You've got the headline in the packet of information that I gave you. Isn't being criticized from time to time the job description of every politician? Uh, come closer to home in Lansing, red flag, flag laws are under consideration that would nullify a person's constitutional rights without due process. And nobody wants a dangerous person to have a gun. But these bills are fatally flawed and rife with the potential for abuse. And an uh, accusation resulting from a failed blind date would meet the criteria for an extreme protection order. Yet there are no provisions in the bills to punish those who make a false report. Governor Whitmer supports these red flag laws and recently sent a letter to President Trump that calls for a ban on so-called assault weapons, including the AR-15 which Justice Scalia stated in D.C. v. Heller was a weapon in common use and therefore protected under the Second Amendment. By marked contrast, Sue Aller, our state representative here in Alpena, has sponsored legislation at the state level that would make Michigan a Second Amendment sanctuary state. I've spoken with both Alpena County Sheriff Steve Kalajewski and former Under Sheriff Terry King, who will be running against the sheriff in the upcoming election. 
and both men tell me that they will not enforce any unconstitutional <coughs> law. On the other hand, Prosecuting Attorney Ed Black misled this commission when he sent you an email about the fate of this resolution in Marquette County. Mr. Black attached a news story that stated the Marquette County Commission felt they didn't have the authority to vote in favor of the re resolution, giving you a backhanded suggestion to do the same. But he forgot precedent. In 2012, the National Defense Authorization Act authorized the United States military to arrest any person without a warrant, hold them indefinitely without legal counsel, and even rendition them to foreign shores where they might be tortured by the CIA at one of their black sites. Michigan legislators responded to this clearly unconstitutional law by nullifying those sections of the NDAA, making it a crime for any employee of the state of Michigan to cooperate with the federal government in the kidnapping of our citizens. That legislation was passed by a unanimous bipartisan vote in both the House and the Senate and passed into law signed by Governor Snyder in 2013. This commission absolutely has the right to support the sound judgment of the sheriff and the prosecuting attorney. In no way does it direct you to tell them how to do their jobs. That responsibility lies with us, the voters. And come election day, I wouldn't be surprised to find Mr. Black out of a job. Many people say nobody wants to take your guns. That's also not true. Every single Democratic presidential candidate has said that is exactly what they want to do. California <laughs> Representative Eric Swalwell even said that he'd drop a nuke on those areas that would not turn in their weapons. That may have been hyperbole, but I'm, what I'm about to show you is not. Investigative journalist James O'Keefe just released videos of two senior staffers for Bernie Sanders who outlined their plans to send Republicans and even liberals who, don't, who aren't complete communists to modern-day gulags to be worked to death or shot. Can you roll that video, please? The only thing that works, and the only thing that fascists understand is violence. So the only way that you can confront them with Bernie doesn't get the nomination. Or it goes to the second round at the DNC convention. Milwaukee will work. The cops are going to be the ones that are getting beaten in Milwaukee. If, it, if they take Bernie from us, then we have nothing else left to lose. We're willing to go above and beyond what the law says is acceptable. You should expect a violent reaction. Mm -hmm. And you deserve a violent reaction. What are we going to do with them? Gulag. <laughs> Liberals get the fucking wall first. Hey, you guys are all causing problems. You're like working against the revolution. We're just going to remove you and put you in and, Siberia and, and, where you learn the fucking value of like being a comrade. Do you want to fight against the revolution? You're going to die for it, <laughs> motherfucker. Well, what will happen is when we send all the Republicans to the re education. <laughs> let's, let's, let's force them to build roads, rebuild our roads, rebuild yeah. our dams, rebuild our bridges. I know you have like the Antifa sticker on your laptop. Have you ever done, like, been in any of those? Dude, they came to Lansing and they came to Ann Arbor. Uh huh. I'm an anarcho-communist, so mm -hmm. like I'm as furthest, I'm as far to the left as you can possibly get. I always said, you know, I'm a communist. Right, I'll straight up get arms. I want to learn how to shoot and go train. He wants to go out and train how to learn to shoot people to advance their communist agenda. These are not volunteers on Bernie Sanders' campaign staff. They are paid employees, and they haven't been fired. You haven't heard about any of that in the mainstream media because they don't want to sabotage Bernie's campaign. Now, I wanted to show that to you to prove that these threats to the republic do exist and that those threats are coming from inside the campaign of a man who could very easily be the next Democratic president or next Democratic candidate for president of these United States. And in closing, I want to remind you that yesterday was Holocaust Remembrance Day. This seems like a good opportunity to remind you that in the last century, authoritarian ideologies like communism and national socialism took away the guns of the citizenry before the killing started and claimed the lives of almost 200 million people. <coughs> I and most of the people in this room will bend a knee to nobody but Jesus Christ, who charged his disciples to go out and preach God's word to the world, telling them, he that has no sword, let him sell his cloak and buy one. Our Lord knew that it was more important to be armed than to be warm. 
and he instructed his disciples accordingly. Thank you for your attention to this presentation. I'll now yield the floor to any questions that you might have. Okay. <coughs> Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Powell? I would just like to say one thing. And I'm not trying to be nasty. Sure. But I did not like your comment about Mr. Black may not be here this end of the election year. To me, that really sounded like a threat. Is and voting a threat? <clears throat> to some people. To some, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I would like yeah. to keep it clean and uh, let the people decide well, whether or not they want rather, Mr. Black. Yeah. Well, rather th than this is the thing. In, uh, in Marquette County, where the uh, resolution was voted down by six Democrats, we now have four Republicans who do support this resolution running against them in November. That is a political reality. Anybody that does not vote for this reg legislation or this resolution will find themselves opposed in November, be they Republican or Democrat. To me, this is getting political. It is political. Yeah, yeah, it is absolutely <laughs> political. You are a politician. As a matter of fact, you are my politician. You're my commissioner. So that means that if I vote this down, you're not going to vote for me? That's right. right. That's absolutely right. right. Yeah. 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 Excellent thinking. Okay, well, let's, we, we're not here to have a riot, um, so let's try to keep it, uh, you know, civil. Um, so do we have any other questions for Mr. Powell or any other comments? Anybody? No? Okay. Um, one comment that I would have, and I know this came, and in, in I'm telling you right now that I'm a supporter of the Constitution and a supporter mm -hmm. to bear arms. Um, some of the stuff that came to me in email, one particular thing that I wasn't really, uh, I didn't really appreciate. But one of the things that I'm feeling like we need to do, I don't think that we're going to, at least my feeling is, unless somebody else has some other comments or ideas, but I think I need more time to, to look into this. I don't think that, you know, this is the time to, to decide. I think give us some time to look at some Absolutely. other things. Um, and, and I would say to anybody, that being in the position that we're in, we shouldn't, I don't think, we should be trying to, to push something or get something pushed through just because it was thrown at us like within a week ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I personally would like to do some more, and I have been doing some research since, since this was brought to me last <laughs> week, but I, I would like to do some more research and I think give it some more time to look at and have some discussions with some of the other commissioners. I agree. To go before we move forward. This is so, a serious subject and I would And I welcome. totally agree with you that it is a serious yeah. subject. I and I am so I'm a supporter of the Constitution and I would be angry too, but I don't think that, you know, we should at this point make some rash decision, quick decision. Um, without doing our due diligence for research. I have absolutely zero problem with you taking another month to think about it and then vote on it at the next commission meeting. Did, excuse me, did Jackson, uh, didn't Jackson County move it on for next month's vote? They had I'm a, not sure about Jackson yeah, County, Jackson but I do know that Calcasa County is voting it and they are voting for it today. Yeah. As is, uh, uh, I think Jackson delayed it for a month. They wanted to get yeah. it to legal in their, in, in their committees. Yeah, Kalkaska and uh, another county are voting it, uh, are voting for it today. So it'll be passed in right. now three counties, and uh, it's been voted down in one with the you know six Democrats in Marquette. So, and they'll they'll be replaced come November. Well, the Marquette they basically changed the language of the their their resolution. So the resolution is a little bit different than the resolu one of the resolutions that we were we were uh, for. So. Right. This the resolution that the, the board has been or the county commission has been presented is a uh, basically a template that's the same for all counties. Now if the county commissioners in each individual county want to change the wording a little bit, well that's no problem. Uh, matter of fact Sheriff Kalazeski pointed out to me that one of the whereas's says that uh, the county commission will support the sound judgment of the sheriff and the prosecuting attorney. And he said, well, what happens if we get a sheriff in here one day that does not support the Constitution? Well, that's a conversation that we can have four years from now because <laughs> both candidates for sheriff do support this resolution. So no matter who wins uh, the sheriff's election in, in November, 
we've got uh, a constitutional sheriff that's going to stand with the people. I think that's a very important John, thing. Can I address something? Sure. So, first of all, uh, the only reason I gave you the article is because I wanted you to be aware of what other counties were doing. Well, and again, I, and I appreciate an actual... that. No, and I appreciate what you forwarded, but one of the things, and, and you even said in your email to us that this is up to us mm -hmm. to make our decision. Absolutely, and that's and what so, I wanted to try and yep, discuss. And, and, and I have no problem with that, and I appreciate what you've done. And I, I think you, you're as in the position that you're in, you're trying to help with us with the legalities of it. Correct. So, and I appreciate that. So, so there's, all this is saying, this document. Which one? Though? Is this the one that... So the, the Second Amendment Sanctuary County. Yep. Yeah. When you look at it, all it's saying is every single one of us takes an oath. Mm -hmm. What this is saying, follow that oath. Yep. Yeah. So for the sheriff, for the deputies, for the prosecutor, for all of you, it states a bunch of cases, but really what it gets down to is it says that it supports the county sheriff and the prosecuting attorney in the exercise of their sound discretion to not enforce any citizen an unconstitutional firearms law. Well, frankly, you could make that for every single amendment to the United States Constitution, mm -hmm. for the entirety of the United States Constitution, for the entirety of the state of Michigan Constitution, and you could make this for every single thing. Really, this doesn't change what the sheriff or I do. We have to abide by the Constitution. All this is saying is whether or not the commissioners sign on to calling this county a sanctuary county. So it doesn't change anything else from the standpoint of legalities because we're all sworn to our duty <coughs> under our oath. So I just wanted to make that clear. Yep and make sure that it was understood that when I forwarded you the information, it was merely for your information, which is exactly what I said in my email. And, I, and again, like so. I said, that's what I, that's what I want to say is you did not try to sway us in either way. You just forwarded the information that you had, and you, in your email you specifically said that's our decision to make. So. Okay, I understand that. And I, I'd probably tell you, <coughs> I, I just felt that it would have been more fair had the information that was sent Prov uh, provided information from both sides of the argument. Sir, well, it's fine. So, and that's why I feel like this is an important decision to before we jump into anything. Uh -huh. To I make a motion that we table this till next month's meeting. Get it, to, get it, to the committee. You uh, get it to the chairman, and yourself, and uh, and our legal, and uh, come back next month. With okay. The, with sounds, is that recommendation. That? Yeah. I'll support that. Okay. Okay. Well, he just tabled it, so it's not, we don't need a roll call. You just say all in favor, yeah. say aye. Okay, so all in favor for that, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you for watching The Truth is Viral with your host, Bobby Powell. Make sure to follow The Apocalypse on Twitter at The Truth is Viral. Like The Truth is Viral on Facebook, and if you can, please remember to donate to the cause via PayPal at www.bobpowell.blogspot.com.